If I ask, what is your favorite song or movie? I think that most of you will be able to give me a quick answer. But if instead I ask you, what is your favorite painting? I believe that most people will struggle to give me an immediate response. And it seems for me as maybe just people are losing their interest in art. Back in the summer of 2015, I had the chance to visit the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. My family was in town, and we thought it would be a great time, especially since my aunt, Consuelo Velasquez, was joining us. Now let me tell you something about my aunt. She is a special person to me. She has been a professional visual artist with a career of over 50 years. Not only that, she also has been exposing her art all around the world. And even recently, she was recognized as one of the greatest Latino artists among Frida Kahlo and other important figures. So if there is someone that knows about art, that is for sure my aunt. And soon after, we began exploring the museum. And my aunt began describing the art, talking about the paintings and telling us stories of the artist. His stories such as inspiration behind Mark Rothko's paintings and how he was looking to depict emotions such as happiness and sadness with just pure color. And honestly, I found that fascinating. The way how she was explaining herself was so passionate that you were able to see from a mile away that incredible love for her profession. But the rest of my family, as you can imagine, they were not having a great time. <laughs> After 30 minutes, they were just tired and didn't want to hear anything else about art anymore. Also, in case you're wondering, that is a picture after, so maybe they look happy because we're just leaving the museum. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, that extreme contrast of love and disinterest was so fascinating, yet hard to understand that I needed to find out why. The following year, a group of Northeastern students conducted a research on museum goers. And they found that people under the age of 35 still visit museums on a regular basis. But what was surprising is that they found that those people go to museums just to say that they went there, but not to actually be there. The same studies found that when they ask about their favorite art styles, people say that they like classic, modern art over classical art. But when they shown images of both modern and classical art, these participants actually prefer the classical ones better. And some of them even said that modern art looks like something anyone could do, while classical art looks like something that requires a lot of skill. So what is going on? <laughs> For me, it seems that these people are still maybe interested in going to museums, but at the same time appear to be confused when it comes to be about the arts. And since then, I began thinking, if there is a way that I can help my family and the public in general just appreciate art like my aunt does. And so my entrepreneurial journey began. But not immediately after, actually, I didn't have any real intentions to start my own company, not until facing one of the most powerful forms of motivation, rejection. After I graduated, I began looking for jobs particularly in the art space. And I was really excited to learn about local companies that were utilizing technology in museums. But as you can imagine, I apply and I didn't get the job. So I decided to do this on my own. After telling one of my friends and former classmates about the rejections, I said, hey, I have an idea about an app for museums. Do you want to help me? And he said, sure, why not? And soon after, we began with the ideation process of our new company that we call The Frame. And our initial idea was pretty simple. I just wanted to put my aunt in my phone and just bring it with me every time I visit the museum. But we wanted to become that bridge that connected museums, art, and people. What made the most sense was developing a universal mobile application to help people understand art at every single museum they visit. And during all this entrepreneurial journey, 
I also continued to learn about the history of art and began to understand how art could be useful for all of us. I noticed how by looking at a painting, you can learn about composition and how that can help you to have a better understanding of a good sense of design. For example, we can see how companies such as Apple had adopted a minimalistic approach, constantly reminding us of the importance of a good sense of design. Also, we can learn about creativity by understanding how artists use their imagination to transform a blank canvas into their own realities. And perhaps that can help us to think outside of the box in order to create our own worlds. And even maybe we can learn about perseverance by looking beyond the paintings, understanding that incredible journey that the artists have to take to create such wonderful pieces. Just like back in the times of Pablo Picasso, Renoir, Matisse and Monet, artists who had limited or non resources were looking for ways to create these new wonderful things. And as an entrepreneur myself, I found that so similar to what I was looking to accomplish. But I think that Professor Howard Stevenson from the Harvard Business School describes this the best. He said, entrepreneurship is a pursuit of opportunity beyond resources control. And I believe that is the same case for artists. Also, <laughs> during all this time, I discovered my favorite painting. And this is Las Meninas by Diego Velazquez. And allow me to tell you why I love this painting so much. There is a lot going on here. Perhaps the first thing that catches your attention is a little girl, Margarita Teresa, the daughter of King Philip IV of Spain. But take a closer look. This painting is not only about her. This painting is about the art of painting itself. On your left, you can see Velazquez himself painting on what appears to be a large canvas. And far on the back, a mirror, which is reflecting the actual king and queen of Spain. In Velazquez's times, painting didn't have the same level of appreciation as poetry and music. And having this in mind, we can realize that this painting was an argument about the relevance of his virtue and the beauty of this art. What Velazquez accomplished here is putting us in the shoes of royalty, as he appears to be painting us, the viewers of this, his masterpiece. Perhaps he wanted to tell the world that the divine source of his inspiration is all of us, his viewers. As I mentioned at the beginning of my talk, I used to think that people were losing their interest in art. But now, I feel optimistic about this. Maybe that'll be true. I believe that future generations will remain interested in the beauty of art, and it's just a matter of developing curiosity, making art relevant and less intimidating for the general public. For me, it was realizing the similarities between artists and entrepreneurs. And for you, the next time you visit a museum, take a closer look, a closer look to all those beautiful paintings on the wall. Who knows, perhaps you'll find the one, the one that will become your favorite painting and will inspire you to keep making the world just a little bit more interesting for all of us. Thank you. <laughs>